Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BSV TV. I'm your host, Sir Toshi, and on this show, we'll be defending the one and only truly genuine Bitcoin. The Bitcoin that Satoshi Nakamoto designed in his white paper as a peer to peer electronic cash system for the world. Let's get the disclaimers out of the way. So all the statements that you hear on this show are opinion and must only ever be taken as opinion. They are never to be taken as any form of advice, family, financial, sexual or otherwise. And on that note, let's sit back, relax, have some fun and enjoy the show. Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and set your own fee on Streamanity. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I wasn't asked why I'm convinced. Craig is Satoshi. Um, I posted on, on Reddit, he signed in my presence uh, the private, using the private key from block one, block number one, the very first mined Bitcoin block uh, on a computer that I'm convinced had not been tampered with, on software I'm convinced that had not been tampered with, a message of my choosing. At Enchain, we've just funded a number of universities doing, so far, a test up to one gigabyte because it validates what we've already done independently. We've tested up to 380 gigabyte blocks. We have tested 1 million transactions a second and transaction sizes up to 20 megabytes. Super complex scripts, basically ones that can run operating systems. That's basically all of global commerce times about 50. On top of that, we can have complex scripts. On top of that, we can scale each of those transactions 1,000 times, which effectively means about a billion transactions per second, which means we can then have all derivatives, all complex trades. That means high frequency trading. It means everything that happens globally. Is the market that effectively BSV is going for, is that global e-commerce, which is currently valued at $29 trillion? No, that's just more. Cool. Buy and sell Bitcoin instantly at bsvgravity.com. And you can now book and pay for your winter holiday at skibsv.com. Good afternoon, everybody. It looks like we are live at five, rocking and rolling. Always oh, just managed to scrape in and get these shows done on time. Love it when a plan comes together. Uh, right, so I've uh, reset my computer. Kilobytes per second is in the red. Uh, so if anybody is having trouble uh, uh, viewing this, I do apologize. Uh, I guess it's just the uh, the amount of data that um, uh, Twitch um, uses due to the due to the resolution. But we'll carry on and see how it goes. Ah, oh, Joshua Arrow in the house. Great stuff. All right. So the reason we broadcast on Twitch is because um, YouTube have uh, already taken down two of my channels. Then they prevented me from editing my shows. Then they were deleting episodes. And I was just like, you know what? This is absolutely insane. So now we broadcast live on Twitch, put the trailer up on uh, YouTube, and then broadcast or um, upload the full episode onto Streamanity. So rock and roll. Let's just get onto it, uh, into it for any uh, newbies that haven't seen my show before. Uh, because I'm expecting a, a huge influx of people very soon um, coming to my show asking the obvious question, what is Bitcoin SV? Well, the narrative I'm going to stick with is that it's just Bitcoin. That's it. So Bitcoin started out the Genesis block. And the reason that Bitcoin was started is because we, the human race, need a commodity money. A commodity money is so important because a commodity mustn't, or a commodity money is something that is common to everyone. There is no single central point of authority that can print it and either say yes or no. It's effectively like a uh, like a socialist state. Uh, and uh, to show you how important uh, it is, let me just uh, type in here. We go um, uh, Wikipedia 1933 gold. Let's see what this comes up with. This is the one we're after. This was the uh, the poster issued by the United States government in 1933, demanding that everybody give them their gold. Can you imagine? I mean, so 
So maybe back in the day you could probably, you know, blind people by saying, well, you know, it's it's good for your country to uh, to give your gold to the Federal Reserve because you're not using it for anything. It's just sat in your, uh, it's just, you know, sat in your safety deposit box or in your vault. Uh, what you want to do is you want to give it to us for the benefit of your country. Can you imagine them uh, saying this about Bitcoin? They're just like, yeah, so... Uh, what you want to do now is uh, you want to give us your Bitcoin uh, for the uh, for the good of your country. <laughs> People would be like, hold on a minute. You see, initially the dollar was backed by gold. So it was gold that gave the dollar a price. Whereas now it's the dollar that gives Bitcoin a price. So Bitcoin is effectively built on top of the fiat currencies. So therefore, um, any government has got absolutely no right whatsoever to, uh, to ask you to hand over your Bitcoin to them for the sake of your country. Because you can see the, the fear amount in front of your eyes. And it's like, hold on a minute, something isn't right here. This stinks. You're asking me to give you like $25,000. And what do I get in return for that? You know, I want $25 worth back. Whereas they didn't do that with gold. They were just like, yeah, you just got to hand over your gold because uh, if not, it's a uh, $10,000 fine. And it's just like, well, what are you going to do if I don't hand you over my Bitcoin? What? Find me the amount that I've got in Bitcoin? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this, this, is what, this, is, this, what, this is what is so good about Bitcoin. Literally, it has got these, these scumbags by the short and curlies. These people who have been literally been able to print um, as much as they want and cause as much shit as they want because they know that when they when they cause shit Well, you know money needs to be uh, printed in order to sort this shit out But you know uh, now it's a bit like with cancer There's you know, there's too much money in treatment to want to find a cure um, as with the, as with a lot of things Now there's there's too much money in causing shit for them not to want to cause shit which is why shit happens all the time. Because, wow, well, just print money, print money, print money. And this is why they do off-balance sheet transactions. I mean, seriously, why on earth, or how on earth can a federal body get away with doing off-balance sheet transactions? It is absolutely outrageous what they are, what they are trying to do. So, so this, this is why we need a commodity money. Because, and it's digital as well. Like, everything is digital, but it's now backed by the sovereignty of... Um, oh, well, it's, it's now backed by uh, data sovereignty. It is effectively commoditized data sovereignty. This is why we need a commodity money. So that's why Bitcoin was started. So, Bitcoin started here. But, as you would expect, and as you know, or as, as we know, when... Um, uh, well, I'm just looking at messages here. Okay, see KP Dad in there. <laughs> um, yeah, if you're having trouble uh, viewing this, I know my uh, my Twitch has just gone down. I'm just going to try and refresh that on my on my tablet. See if it's still going, so you guys can actually see it. Oh dear, oh dear. Reload content. Mhm. Mm All uh, right. Let me just start my uh, start my Twitch again. Come on. Let's see what's going on. Let's be having ya. Here we go, live. Is it, is it, are we, am I gonna have any joy? Just, oh, I can see a little bit, a little bit behind on the time, but uh, yeah, that's all right. Um, uh, yeah, so what I was saying was, uh, as we know that whenever a, uh, a currency or whenever an empire uh, starts to uh, crumble, its currency starts to get debased. And with the fiat currency that we're using, because we don't shave bits off the coin or, you know, debase it by uh, uh, diluting the metal content in it, we just simply inflate it. And that is what is happening right now. But, you know, obviously these people are, are desperate to uh, stay in control. They'll kick the can down the road. They'll destroy the economy to, quote, build back better. You know, um, start again, economic reset, all this shit. Because, because the amount of money that they're printing, they're just like, all oh, right, well, actually, uh, we need to uh, smash the economy again because there's been too much borrowing. There's, uh, there's too much money in the economy. But they're not going to have the balls to do what Margaret Thatcher did and uh, increase, increase interest rates because there are too many people edge-dwelling already. It would be literally catastrophic. And they would lose their jobs, too many people pointing fingers at them. So now they have to find an alternative excuse. So it's just, oh, right, oh, there's a pandemic. Well, 
you know, let's say if if there was like something like the Spanish flu that was going around, where you know all these people were dying, do you think they would honestly stand up and go, "Oh well, uh, there's a flu that's going around killing people. You know, it's bird flu. It's uh, H1N1." And uh, yeah, by the way, uh, it's a great time for an economic reset. People would be like, "What the f are you on about?" Like we've got people dying over here, and you're talking, you're saying, "Oh, it's a great time for an economic reset." Do one, like absolutely insane. So anyway, um, this uh, this same group of people that have got access to the money printers, you know, were able to obviously because they can do whatever they want, uh, funnel a hundred million dollars through multinational companies, and get them to a group of developers who changed Bitcoin. And the thing is, though, philosophically and theoretically. Like, you cannot change Bitcoin because when you change it, you centralize it and you crash its fundamental value to zero. And this is exactly what Blockstream have done to BTC by segregating the signatures. It was the signatures that have an integral part in Bitcoin. They hold all the users and developers to account. Once you tamper with those signatures, once you segregate those signatures, it means that whoever segregated those signatures has complete control of the system. And they were able to socially engineer control of the ticker symbol. But now they have complete control of it, which is why Vitalik Buterin had to ask permission to build Ethereum on top of the Bitcoin blockchain. And when they said no, he was just like, okay, fine, I'll do it myself. But by doing it himself, what he hadn't thought of was solving the paradox of the centralized starting point which makes a uh, digital currency a commodity. So Ethereum is completely centralized by Vitalik and the Ethereum Foundation, especially now that they are moving to proof or have moved to proof of stake because there is no competition between the stakeholders. It is a completely centralized system, which means the token on it, which is Ethereum, has no fundamental value, which means all it has right now is a speculative price. But it just simply means that when knowledge catches up with speculation, the pr speculative price will soon match its fundamental value at absolute zero. And so for any uh, any newbies or skeptics who maybe uh, don't believe that Blockstream do actually uh, control Bitcoin 100%, I've made some fantastic video clips here over the years as I like collecting these things. And we're going to uh, play just a little snippet from uh, an interview that um, Samson Mao did on Simon Dictwit. Have a listen to this. Bitcoin was created by, by the central bankers that enslave you today. It is their scapegoat. How do you want? How do you answer those, Max and Stacey? I think the evidence is clear that uh, they do not control it. It, it. There's ten years, almost eleven years now, of a uh, track record. Yeah, yeah. Blockstream yeah. controls it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Who does? Blockstream. Oh, <laughs> all right. I was looking at you when I said that. Yeah, I'm a block. <laughs> I have a spy. I'm, I'm one of the spies. <laughs> no, so um, this. Um, you know, it's an interesting. Now that it's it, there's. <laughs> yeah, let's have one. Let's have that uh, one more time. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Let's have almost eleven years now of uh, track record. Yeah. Yeah. Well, stream controls know, they, they... it. Listen to this. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Who does? <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, who does? Let's have that one more time. Block stream. Oh. <laughs> There we go. I will never get tired of playing that because that is the gem that I've been searching for all this time. That is it. That's all we needed to hear. Oh, all right. <laughs> I was looking at you when I said that. Yeah, cue the nervous laughter. Yeah, I'm a black <laughs> I have a spy. I'm, I'm one of the spies. <laughs> no, so um, this, um, you know, it's an interesting now that it's, it, there's, uh, yeah, no, it's interesting now that there's a... Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> BTC is absolutely 100% controlled by Blockstream. It is not a commodity. It has no value whatsoever. They have purposely prevented it from scaling. They've segregated the signatures. They've told people not to use it. They told people it's a store of value. And now people can't even use it. It is an, it's an absolute pile of shit. And then again, you know, anybody who wants to attack uh, Bitcoin, they know they have to attack the signatures because, like I said, it's the, sig the signatures that are integral to Bitcoin's integrity of being a commodity and neutral money. Which is why uh, Roger Ver and his mates started adding Schnorr signatures, like and uh, checkpoints, 
and uh, uh, wanting governance. I mean, it's so ridiculous. They actually want governance. They're like, oh, we need to decide how we go, how we get governance. You don't get governance on a neutral digital commodity money. I mean, can you believe it, honestly? These these people are, you know, like uh, extremist libertarians, and they're actually going on about governance. Oh, we don't want you to govern us, but uh, we'll govern ourselves. Uh, and now we need to argue amongst ourselves about who's going to govern us. It's just so ridiculous. Honestly, shit coiners, utter shit for brains. So uh, now we're going to have a listen to uh, what, what, what Roger Ver said in his interview. And uh, a little reminder here is that uh, if, uh, uh, if, if, a, if a money is, is not good for everyone, it is of no value to anyone. Because people will just simply use the medium of exchange that fulfills the trade in the best way, which is the one that everyone uses. Others will just simply get phased out. So if global trade and international commerce cannot use this medium of exchange because it doesn't provide legal recourse in the form of legal protection, they will never use it and you have effectively resigned it to the waste paper bin of eternity. So let's listen to what Roger Ver um, said um, in his interview when he was asked about uh, providing legal recourse in uh, BCH. Here we go. Have a, have, a look, have, a look, have a listen to this. I have a question here from Satoshi, defender of Bitcoin. He said, if a cryptocurrency is anonymous like BCH, I don't think BCH is anonymous, but maybe there is something. Check out cashfusion.com and, and you, you combine oh. that with uh, reusable payment codes and you get Bitcoin cash in the same sort of ballpark of privacy as Monero. It's really awesome. So you can check oh, okay. out. Cash Fusion, and I always get it wrong. I think it's .com, but it might be .org. So you can check both. CashFusion.com. Okay, awesome. So, so BCH maybe using Cash Fusion and XMR. If they're anonymous, how can a business get legal recourse against a supplier if the supplier defaults and no proof on the transaction exists? Because anon. Yeah, good question. Let's see what he says. Yeah, if you want your cryptocurrency to be perfectly legal for everything all the time. Just go use your Visa card, just go use your PayPal, right? What do you need a cryptocurrency for? You can do all of it with a centralized, fully legal and fully compliant payment platform, right? So go use PayPal. I think you've missed the entire point. Uh, the, entire, the entire point of cryptocurrencies is that by technological design, they are beyond the reach of the law. That is absolutely outrageous. That is fundamentally wrong. That is dangerous. That is stupid. It is reckless, irresponsible. And I'll make myself sound like a parent. They're above the law. That's why, imagine, if Bitcoin could have been shut down mm. by governments, they probably would have shut it down from you know, right out of the gate. And it's the fact that Bitcoin can't be shut down. No, it's not that it can't be shut down. It's the fact that they didn't shut it down because it wasn't doing anything illegal. You absolute fool. What, so like, what, like we should ask the BSVers this. If they pass a law saying BSV needs to shut down their blockchain, are they going to obey and shut down their BSV blockchain? So the law is based on what is reasonable. So the law would have to have an excuse that was more than reasonable, a more than reasonable excuse to shut down the chain if it was doing harm to society. And if they haven't got that, they won't be able to do it because people are actually using it for a purpose. I hope the answer would be no. Um, no, wrong. Which is just you know, a lot of the stuff I see from some of these BSVers are silly. Oh, Roger, you're so silly. But then there's other BSV fans that, uh, you know, I'm very, very sympathetic to their way of thinking. But the, the ones that say that the blockchains all need to be legally compliant about everything all the time, uh, just go use your Visa card. Thanks, Georgia. I will. Because I wouldn't touch BCH with a barge pole. With a barge pole. Because if you're using BCH, you're using it for criminal purposes. And if you're using it for criminal purposes, people know you're a criminal. Which means you're going to get caught because you're outing yourself. Which means even criminals won't be stupid enough to use BCH. Oh my god. And if you wonder why I call it B-Crash, because it's a piece of shit, it's because Roger calls it B-Crash himself. Have a listen. And we're going to really spread Bitcoin Crash across the entire country here in Antigua. <laughs> there we go you've heard it here we've got uh cool coin which is totally controlled and b crash which is an absolute piece of shit admitted to by both parties absolutely outrageous so uh here we go this is the uh the shit coin uh, the coin crap market uh so i've even drawn pretty pictures for the shit coiners for any shit coiners who are watching this for the first time and uh, you'll notice that I've added uh, a description of uh, what each, each of these uh, cryptocurrencies are on the left-hand side. You will notice all these shitcoins are securities because securities have absolutely no value as money. 
A security has its value secured to the single entity that issued it. So if that single entity either goes away or goes bust or something like that, the security becomes absolutely worthless because it is entirely dependent on that centralized source. So the only two commodity currencies are Litecoin, which pains me to say this. It really does. You've no idea how much it hurts me to say that Litecoin is a genuine commodity. Reason being is that Charlie Lee exit scammed the shit out of it. And if you don't believe me, well, have a listen to what Charlie Lee said in his interview about Litecoin. Here we go. You created Litecoin, right? So this has to be something like you're incredibly passionate about. Yeah. It's most of you probably know, um, I kind of created it just for fun, right? It wasn't, I didn't really expect it to become anything. Uh, I didn't know that, Charlie. Is that why last time I looked at it, it's got a $9 billion market cap? Hadn't you have better told everybody you just created it for a bit of fun and it was an absolute joke and all you were intending to do was exit scam it? Unbelievable. So literally, the only genuine commodity money is Bitcoin, which is BSV, as I've just explained. So there is huge amounts of development on it. The result is a locked protocol, which means that anyone can use it. The emoji is the, well, the, uh, the emoji is like literally like money with wings and the future is it's going to absolutely rock it. Description is just simply a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Coin stamp is BSV. The coin type is Bitcoin. Yes, indeed it is. But uh, um, if you and if you hear anybody, uh, you know, telling you otherwise, like telling you maybe you should get involved and uh, start trading these shit coins, let's just remind ourselves what is it that shit coiners say? Hey, hey, hey! Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> just stay away from any shit coiners that sound like that. Oh my goodness me! Uh, right, so uh, yeah, just going back onto Bitcoin quickly. Let's uh, let's remind ourselves what Satoshi Nakamoto told everybody about Bitcoin, money, and power. Here we go. This is what it all comes down to. See, what people don't understand is Bitcoin, with a stable protocol, takes away power. If no one can change the protocol, not me, not God, there's no power in money. Money is all about power. And this is one of the things Bitcoin has done. It has removed that power. It will remove that power globally. There we go. And power is the power to cause shit. Literally everywhere. I mean, we in the Western world uh, may not notice it because they, uh, they cause shit on other sides of the world. But when you see like Vietnam getting blown up, Afghanistan is getting blown up even though they're living in caves and mud huts. Uh, Nicaragua is getting blown up because they're like, you know, living in the jungle in like rural villages and stuff like that. Yeah, we don't notice it. We think, oh yeah, everything's like cushy up here, you know, it's like peace and harmony. We have no idea what those people who govern us, that have got control of the money printers, the amount of shit that they are creating for other people around the world. You know, making it dangerous for the entire world. Them alone. But, you know, what they do is they, you know, oh, they look after their citizens. You know, God bless the military and all that. Got to put money there. Well, why do you have to put money into the military? Why? Because the military is a closed market. And being a closed market, when you pump money into the military, it's not felt in the domestic economy. So therefore, the effects of inflation aren't felt. Because inflation are what destroys empires and civilizations. So you pump the inflation into the military, or you simply export it abroad. Then the military then spend the money that they've got on arms and ammunition and services and everything like that. And these people who print the money own those companies that provide the military with the services and like ammunition and like, you know, creating all the materials and stuff like that. So that's how they get the money back in their pocket. Because they can't just simply print it and put it back into their pocket. Because people will be going, what the hell do you think you're doing? That's absolutely outrageous. It's all smoke and mirrors. So, but uh, let's have a listen to what Satoshi Nakamoto's motivation was for creating Bitcoin. Here we go. At the end of the day, we own a lot of Bitcoin. The simple thing is, if we make the network scale, if we make it bigger, my main compensation, more than anything anyone could ever pay me, is the price of Bitcoin goes up. So that's my pure drive. I want Bitcoin not to go up to 10,000 or 100,000. I want it to be worth millions. So do I. Per Bitcoin. 
that's it. And that's what we spend money for. First. <laughs> there we go. That's what they spend money for. Very simple. So for any shit coin who hasn't heard my show before, that should be a pretty good indication of uh, kind of like what my show is all about and the information that I'm trying to tell people. So on that note, let's have a quick look at these figures because I've not seen these today. I always get excited when I'm uh, when I'm looking at these. So oh, look at that. What's going on? A hash rate 0.2 percent on uh, Bitcoin. Uh, network nodes 2.2 percent. Transactions 33.2 percent. And uh, block size 27.5 percent. Oh, just means these uh, shit coins are a beatiness. And never mind. Let's just play spot the biggest block on B crash. You can see a 1.2 megabyte block, a 2.4 megabyte block for them. Congratulations. That's huge. I have noticed an increase in the volume of transactions because they've got they've got an advert out at the moment. So who knows? But I mean, adverts are just simply pump and dumps. It's absolute bollocks. Uh, let's have a look on CoreCoin again. They've got a one megabyte restriction. So that's one megabyte is the only thing they can put in their blocks. And they don't want people to use it anyway. Anyway, let's have a look at Bitcoin. Look at this, a 13.8 megabyte block. Absolutely smashing it. And then twos and fives, ones, threes. Yeah, like absolutely, absolutely awesome. But I mean, these are you know, small in comparison to what Bitcoin uh, is actually capable of. So uh, Bitcoin hash rate by network, yeah, 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 yeah. Hash rate just simply follows price, which follows value, which follows utility. Uh, proof of work by network, again, CoreCoin B crash will literally stop overnight. Um, we got a hash rate by network, B crash versus Bitcoin, proof of work, B crash versus Bitcoin. It's 28,000 times cheaper to transact on Bitcoin than CoreCoin because CoreCoin's a piece of shit. It's currently 4.8% more profitable to mine on CoreCoin. Oh, interesting. Uh, right, so a daily average Bitcoin block size by network. Uh, so B crash increasing their block size. Uh, I think that's probably with the advertising campaign. We'll have a look at that in just a minute. Uh, transactions by network, oh, you know, B crash trying to make a last minute dash for it, but it ain't gonna work because it's a pump. That's all it is. There's no value in B crash, like, because they don't understand what commodity money is. It's absolutely hilarious. Uh, daily average Bitcoin transaction per block by network, oh, you know, I'm B crash are trying, you're trying, but ain't gonna go anywhere because there's no value in it whatsoever. Fees, I mean, look at this, absolutely smashing it. Uh, USD with Bitcoin. Fees to Toshi's Bitcoin, absolutely smashing it. Block reward ratio, again, that's going to follow price, which follows value, which follows utility. And uh, blockchain growth, just absolutely pissing myself out at uh, B crash all the time. All uh, right, this is the important bit. This is where ev this is where all the information is that you need. Uh, so we have got uh, the global hash rate. Uh, Binance up there this week. Uh, Jihan pulling us socks up this week. Uh, F2 pool still leading the charge. Pooling back up there, pushing out pool down into uh, fifth. Uh, QOB in sixth, interesting. And look, oh, this is CK pool, no pool, men pool, pushing BTC. Tau, oh, okay, so that's um, that's global hash rate, but we really want to see if Tal is on uh, core coin. Uh, so global hash rate, uh, 24 hours. Uh, Tal's still in there with 0.06%, but we need to see where that's focused. Right, here we go. So, cool coin, right? Um, pulling, pulling their socks up on cool coin, probably because BTC.com is mining B crash. I've no doubt. So we'll have a look at that in just a minute. Uh, F2 pool down. So F2 pool are mining. Oh no, no, F2 pool has been pushed down for 24 hours. Uh huh. All right, here we go. So uh, B crash, yeah, you know BTC.com macking it hard on there. Total shitcoin enterprises. BTC top another shitcoin enterprise, and pool an utter shitcoin enterprise. Um, but let's have a look at Bitcoin. So let's uh, let's have a look at the Tal indicator. Tal is nowhere to be seen on Core Coin. It's because they know they know, and they're uh, they're keeping Binance off the chain. This absolutely has me in hysterics. Uh, absolute hysterics. Um, because personally, if you ask me, I think. Um, I think purposely, at the moment we're seeing a massive price uh, spike in BTC due to um, due to liquidity, the lack of liquidity, and this is what I think is going to be generated um, with BSV. There's going to be a huge lack of liquidity in BSV, which is going to absolutely motor the price up. 
like literally rocket the price up and the apps will just simply be able to maintain uh, maintain the price at, at any level. So I, I honestly think that uh, BSV could literally sort of like shoot from where it is now to, you know, something insane, like like literally like $100,000 overnight. Um, seriously, it could happen. Um, because we know that all the miners and the large exchanges, they're all cashed out. They're cashed out of BTC. So that means they're sitting on billions of dollars, billions of dollars worth of cash, like currently in fiat currency, like waiting to flood into the market because everyone, because they all know that uh, BSV is literally the only hope that they have, like literally. So, I mean, it's and like with the, like, like I said, the lack of liquidity, the price could just absolutely rock it, like rock it. So it will flip BTC like overnight. And rightly so, because you know all of us here in in uh, BSV, you know we have followed the protocol. We have do, we have done the right thing, you know. Like none of us have really been, you know, like dirty traders or anything like that. In fact, to be honest with you, I think dirty traders are going to get shaken out, you know, uh, because they're traders. They'll have like you know uh, sell orders and that um, stuck in on the exchanges, but then the exchanges um, won't have enough USDT um, to provide liquidity for them. The exchange will then um, the exchange will then probably shut down. The price will then uh, rocket. Uh, traded these dirty traders will just simply be stuck. Um, they'll probably lose everything to be honest with you because the exchange will go bust. So that will teach all these dirty traders to be trading. Like it's going to be horrendous for them. Like do not have, do not hold, or do not keep your BSV on exchanges. Uh uh never, 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 never. never. Um, you know, keep keep it safe on a uh, in a in a in a BSV wallet. Um, that's that's honestly the the soundest thing I can say. Um, yeah. So I mean, but you know, dirty traders need to be taken out of the market because they undermine uh, they undermine Bitcoin's value, which is its use as cash. Because um, they're you know dirty selfish traders wanting it for themselves. So uh, yeah, that's an invaluable uh, piece of information there. That I've just. Uh, I've just provided. So let's have a quick look at the chain uh, functioning live in front of our eyes. Here we go. Uh, so oh, uh, currently nearly sort of like three transactions a second moving up a little bit. I've been quite low recently. Um, but all these uh, these uh, vertical uh, rectangular blocks that we're seeing here are the uh, moving along the top of the screen. These are the transactions being recognized by the nodes on the network. Uh, below it are the uh, organizations that are generating the transactions. Or should I say the transaction generators? And then on the right, we've got the transaction ID, the input, the output, the type, and the op return. Then below that is the mempool, which is where the transactions um, uh, go once they're recognized by the nodes on the network. And it is here that the uh, the miners and payment processors compete with each other to process the transaction, to build blocks, put them in the block, and then add the block to the blockchain and win the block reward, which is the coin base of 6.25 Bitcoin. And uh, down, down the bottom, we can see all the blocks on the chain. So we can see there's a huge one here, 13.86 uh, uh, megabytes. That was, and in the highlighted block below that, we can see the hash, the height, mine to buy, size, date, time, transaction count, and total fees. Total fees in that block currently equaling uh, $12.44. But uh, as we have seen, we are expecting a huge volume in uh, transaction, in, or in transaction fees and transactions very soon. Like literally, like I said, things can literally happen overnight. This is gonna be absolutely epic. Like absolutely epic, I cannot stress this enough. Um, so like I said, you, all you, you just simply have to be careful of cortisol flooding your brain, turning you into an absolute selfish prick. <laughs> you know, nice problem to have being a selfish prick, but I'm just telling you in the long run, it doesn't do anybody any favors. So literally just try and stay grounded. It's like you knew this day was coming. You know how it has happened. You know, don't be going around bragging to people as, oh, you know, I told you so. I mean, people are going to lose everything. You know, these shit coiners are literally going to lose everything. Bitcoin is the biggest bubble in history. It absolutely dwarfs the uh, dwarfs the tulip bubble. The tulip bubble was just simply uh, contained within uh, the Netherlands. You know, Bitcoin is global. I mean, it's yeah, it it dwarfs um, Bernie Madoff's Ponzi scheme at sixty billion. Um, uh, it dwarfs uh, the financial fraud of Enron at sixty three billion. It dwarfs WorldCom at one hundred and seven billion. 
I mean, BTC alone has got a market cap of like 500 billion. You know, it's just absolutely, uh, it's absolutely staggering. Um, so just like I said, just just be prepared for it. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what happens between here and there. You know, market could tank, market goes up, market goes down, but miners need to be given a lifeline and they are cashed out of BTC at the moment. Literally cashed out of billions of dollars worth. Billions waiting to pile in to BSV, which isn't available on too many platforms because these douchebags have delisted it and Binance are desperately trying to mine it, but they keep being kicked off the chain. Uh, absolutely hilarious. Um, so uh, yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's brilliant. So yeah, back to uh, Bitcoin Blocks Live. So now we've seen that. Let's have a quick look at these uh, BitInfo charts. Here we go before we get tuck in, uh, stuck into the news. So again, for any newbies, these are just like interesting metrics. You know, comparing the very uh, the various coins, and uh, the ones I quite looking at at the moment, I like looking at at the moment are um, transactions average per hour. And again, if we go to uh, log, we'll go to three years. Take out Dogecoin because there's absolutely no point in that being there. We'll obviously add Bitcoin because that's the only one that uh, we're actually genuinely interested in. And uh, we'll add B crash for lulls. Here we go. So uh, any uh, any intelligent people going, oh, hold on a minute, that uh, purple line seems to be uh, doing quite well. What's that? That's Bitcoin. That's Bitcoin. Uh, even though it's, uh, the, its chain starts at the Genesis block, this shows you the start of the new value and the new ticker symbol. So it started off with a new ticker symbol and a new value. And look at what has happened. It's so blatantly obvious which one is Bitcoin, uh, basically. But again, I mean, all, all this does for me is just simply validates the need for Bitcoin. Like just, it's huge. Um, you know, I cannot stress enough uh, how much this world really needs Bitcoin. So anyway, on that note, I can see that I've been going for almost an hour, so pretty good time to wrap up the show. Gonna leave this image up here while we are doing dinging of the dong. Merci Boku. And get your tweet etched on Twitch forever on the Bitcoin blockchain. Do it today at www.jointwitch.com. Buy BSV .live, the best place to buy Bitcoin SV online. Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and watch the full episode on Streamanity for just 20 cents. Go to www.satoshi.tv. See the link in the description below. Bitcoin, one world, one chain. Yeah! One vision.